Okay, make sure you have your producing dates, uh, producing data notes worksheet available. Uh, next two terms that you need to become familiar with is quantitative data, and this is data that's um, uh, numerical, and you can usually tell numer uh, quantitative data is data that it makes sense to take an average or a mean. It makes sense to have 0.5 of something. Not all numerical data is quantitative. Classic examples I think I've given before is area code. Area 808 is a number, however, it doesn't make any sense to take an average and get 808.5. That then, even though it's numbers, is not quantitative. That would be considered categorical data. Categorical data is also called count data. It's just a simply a matter of putting something in the category and counting them. So here's some examples, and we're going to see if we can figure out which category each one of these fell fall in. So a rating system of superior, good, and average, or poor is, a, again, categories. You're putting um, whatever it is that you're evaluating here into a category. So this would be categorical. Time in seconds to run a mile. Well, run a mile in four minutes or three minutes makes sense to have half a second. I can run the mile in four minutes, one set, one and a half seconds. So finding an average or a mean makes sense. So this would be quantitative. Social security numbers. Well, social security numbers are like area codes. They are, it does not make sense to have an average. It doesn't make sense that your social security is something 0.5. So even though it's a number, we would consider this categorical. Student test scores ranging from 1 to 100. Yeah, it would make sense that it's possible to get a score of 98.5. teacher gives partial credit, you all have gotten scores 0.5. So that makes sense. So this would be quantitative. Heights of people recorded in inches. Again, numerical data. And it makes sense to take an average. It makes sense to have 0.5. So again, this would be quantitative. Zip codes, um, sort of like area codes, uh, couple A's, 96707, doesn't make any sense to have 0.5. So this would be categorical, again, even though it's numbers. Percentage of students in each class who master a particular skill. Um, you can have a percentage you know, uh, that comes out 0.5 out of four is 75 percent you could have 75.5 percent that's okay so this would be quantitative in nature okay some more terms that you need to add to your data notes so you might want to find these first one is explanatory variable explanatoria explanatory sorry explains the observed outcome it is almost always the x variable real easy to remember if you realize that the prefix for this variable starts out with the prefix x matches up to the x variable. A response variable, which is the other one, is the outcome of the study, and that's almost always the y variable. No mnemonic device there, but if you can get x and x planetary, you should be able to realize that the response variable then has to be the y. Discrete data are data that are only isolated points, and this is most common with count data. If I'm counting the number of people who are overweight, it doesn't make any sense to say I have three and a half people who are overweight. I don't want to be that half a person that's overweight. Okay? So whenever a decimal number does not make sense, it would always be considered discrete data. And like I said, this is, happens a lot in count data. Continuous data is values that form an interval. Um, most often, kind, uh, the most common thing here is measurement. And a lot of times, especially in like a science experiment, it's time. And you're measuring a continuum from 0 to 30 seconds. Yeah, you want to know what's happening at 24 and a half seconds or 30.2 seconds, etc. Decimals make sense, so that would be continuous data, and you would usually connect the points in the graph in that situation. With the discrete data, you would not connect the points because the decimals don't make sense. Last terminology you need to add to your notes here is a statistic, a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of a data set. Okay, and so again, some more terminologies, terms to add to the producing data notes. Here's some kind of funny statements here. Half the kids in the U.S. are below the national average. You stop and think of that, think about that for a second, and you realize, yeah, that has to be true. <laughs> okay, that if you have a national average, and half the kids should be below it, and half the kids above it. 
So that's one of those statements that's blatantly obvious that people go have to stop and think about. Uh, next statement is uh, some data out there. Annual deaths by drugs. Tobacco is 400,000 people die by tobacco every year. 90,000 by alcohol. 8,000 with cocaine. And 6,000 who use heroin. So by that logic means that it's safer to take cocaine or heroin than it is to take tobacco and alcohol. I hope you got a little bit of a laugh there, but the idea there is that doesn't make any sense. We all know cocaine and heroin is much more powerful of a drug than tobacco or alcohol. Why is it that these numbers come out that way? Well, I think that the, if you find there are many more people who use tobacco and alcohol, and so the number of deaths that's going to occur by tobacco and alcohol is going to be obviously a lot higher. And while there are people out there who use cocaine and heroin, there aren't then the number of people that use tobacco and alcohol. So the number of deaths would naturally be lower. So this data would be misleading if you tried to make the connection that says, oh wow, cocaine and heroin is the drug to use then. Okay, and this is on Saturday Night Live several years ago. Um, again, one of those statements that if you stop and think about it, you realize, well, that has to be true. We've taken a poll this weekend and realized that 51% of the Americans are in the majority. Yeah, that's obvious. 51% is what makes the majority. Okay, a um, couple more terms to add. Uh, first one here is bias. We've talked a little bit about bias already. Um, it's a factor that is present that seems to favor one outcome or the other. If you remember when you were um, asked to pick five words from that um, Federalist uh, paper, a lot of you guys had a bias that you didn't real about, realize, and you were picking all the letter, words that had lots of letters. Unconscious, probably not thinking about it, but that's what the tendency is. That's a bias. It's not always something that is consciously known. Sometimes it's an unconscious thing that allows you to pick one uh, avenue over another. Okay. Um, another one is voluntary response si samples. These are situations, you hear this a lot on the radio, They'll give you a, a radio call. Call the radio station and tell us what you think about Barack Obama versus the presidential candidates. Or um, Ben Cayetano versus Peter Kyle versus Kirk Caldwell, etc. Okay, well, who's going to call? People who have strong opinions. If you don't really care one another, you're not going to take the time to pick up the phone. But if you really, really care about Ben Cayetano becoming mayor or Kurt Caldwell becoming mayor, you're going to pick up the phone and call. So only people with strong opinions will call, and therefore they usually are very biased. You have to be very careful in those scenarios. Another example would be, like, let's say Coppola High School was looking to add a pool to putting on campus. So they decided to survey their students. Okay, and they sent out a little survey during PTP. And then they said, okay, please return this survey, your results, to the library, and we will compile the results. Well, who's going to take the time to return it to the library? People who feel very strongly, either positive or negative, are going to take the time to walk down the library and turn that paper in. People who don't care one way or the other, they're going to take that paper, probably crumple it up, and never look at it again. So that means that the results are only getting people who have strong opinions. There's going to be some bias in there. Um, Okay, some uh, other examples are response bias, and this is going to be a project that you're going to work on second quarter. You're going to try to create a survey where you're going to try to influence the answers in some way, shape, or form, either by the way you ask the question, or by how you dress, or by influencing by showing them a picture of some kind. However you're going to try to, you're going to try to influence the results. And so, for example, this is a, uh, a survey done by... Some people who wanted to say, their question was, do you feel that teenagers can be responsible parents? And they went out and surveyed a bunch of people, and they have some graphs here. That's kind of what you're going to do here. And the idea is, but if you take a look at the picture, kind of hard to see here, but if you look at the picture, if you notice, the girl here is wearing a pregnancy suit. It's a suit, a, 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 a rubber 
gizmo that she puts on underneath their clothes that makes her look like pre- she was pregnant. And so she would go and ask 25 people at random, do you think teenagers can be responsible parents? And then if you look here, she's not wearing the pregnancy suit. And they went and surveyed, say, 25 people. And they tried to see if there was a difference between the two groups by the fact that she asked some of them with the pregnancy suit on and some of them did it normally. And so this is, they tried to influence the answer by wearing a pregnancy suit and seeing if that had an effect or not. Um, other surveys I've seen is, um, uh, do you think that um, uh, this particular girl is cute and the girl comes up wearing cut-off jeans and the worst clothes in the world who asked that question. And then they go and ask the same question where the girl comes up all dressed out in a you know, prom dress or et cetera. They're trying to influence him by what they wear. Or sometimes you can um, create a survey by um, saying, do you watch cartoons? Or do you still watch cartoons? By inf- putting in that one word, you're probably going to influence the results and people answer a little bit differently than if you hadn't put that word still in. So it's something to think about. You're going to work with a partner and you're going to create this project sometime in second quarter. And that concludes uh, the video for today.